All right, guys, what's up? Um, today, we're going to be doing coconut water agar. This is my go-to agar recipe. It's super easy. I've experimented with a lot of different agar recipes, but if you live in the United States, this one's super easy because there is just an abundance of coconut water. Um, there's a lot of uh, United States companies that have invested in uh, different area, tropical areas and subtropical areas that are producing coconuts, and there's just an abundance of coconut water. Um, where I live in New Cumberland, Pennsylvania, there is a grocery outlet bargain market. I've seen those all across the country. Um, and occasionally they have large amounts of coconut water for very, very uh, affordable prices. Um, so it takes about a liter um, and I can usually get a liter for like a dollar. Um, depends on where you're at and where you can find it. Um, and since it's for the mushrooms, I don't necessarily buy like organic or non-GMO. Um, if, if, if that's your thing, then you can do that. But since I'm not putting it in my body directly, um, I know the mushrooms don't really, and that's not a big deal for them to deal with it if it's not GMO or whatever. And I also, um, I don't care if there's extra sugar and stuff like that because the mushrooms will be okay with it. Um, you don't want anything that has like a lot of like citric acid or anything like that in it. Um, but if it does have extra sugars or anything, that's fine. Um, and uh, we're gonna be utilizing this uh, recycled glass bottle for our vessel, for our agar that's gonna go into the pressure sterilizer. Um, this was a juice bottle. I think it had some strawberry beet juice in it or something like that. Um, if you have any health food stores, or you can go in your organic aisle at your local grocery store, Safe, Safeway, Food Lion, um, Publix, I don't know, whatever, wherever you're at in the country, um, look in the organic section and try and find a glass bottle of juice. Um, enjoy the juice and then save the bottle. Um, these bottles are super good for um, agar. Um, you can keep using the lids. The lids work very well um, in the pressure sterilizer and you can keep using the lids until they rust. Um, right on. In the back here, I have some old agar. Um, this is some uh, nettle agar that has some flocculent and some sediment and things like that. Um, agar, once it cools down, if you don't pour it, it'll solidify. And if it's not contaminated, if you actually sterilize it well, you can reheat it and melt it again and then pour it again. Um, this looks a little janky and a little gross, but I am gonna melt this again once I run this batch and uh, pour it and just use these plates for just um, any random things that I need them for. Um, so the agar that we're gonna use today is this telephone brand agar. I get this at the local Asian store, um, the Asian grocery store um, here in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. I've been to a lot of different Asian stores around the country and you can typically find this brand of agar. Um, if you're gonna be doing this at a larger scale, um, you can order larger packs of agar so there's less plastic waste and anything like that. Um, I should probably do that. I just have a bad habit of buying these when I go to the Asian mall. I really should start uh, buying a bigger pack of agar. Um, but agar is agar unless it has any extra ingredients. Um, so what I do is um, 25 grams of agar to one liter of coconut water and that is my go-to recipe. Um, so these packets come in 25 grams. That's probably why I do this. I just need to stop being such a, such a um, convenience seeking person um, and, and, and do what's better for the planet and stop using these little plastic packets. But 25 grams um, to one liter. So 25 grams of agar, one liter of coconut water. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, turn this little pot on the stove and I'm gonna pour about half my coconut water in here. And you're gonna wanna get that a little bit warm. And um, the reason that I'm doing this is to um, melt and dissolve my agar. If I put the agar in this bottle um, with just cold coconut water or room temperature coconut water, um, the agar won't dissolve. Um, and when I go to put it in the pressure cooker, a lot of the agar will be settled to the bottom. Um, and then once I pull it out of the pressure sterilizer or pressure cooker, um, it'll be more dense. The agar will be dense on the bottom and liquidy on the top. So the first couple plates that you pour won't solidify as well unless you shake it up good. So I don't wanna have to do that. I don't wanna have to deal with that. So I'm gonna melt my agar a little bit first before I put it in here so it's a little bit more homogenized um, and mixed into solution um, whenever I put it into the pressure sterilizer. And 
I don't want to get this boiling hot at all. Um, I just want to get this till it it's kind of mixed up. Um, and maybe when you see a little bit of steam, or you can stick your pinky in there. Um, when it's a little bit too hot for your comfort, then turn it off. Um, because what you don't want to happen is you don't want the sugar in the coconut water to caramelize. Um, mushrooms don't really like caramelized sugars. Um, caramel is essentially a carcinogen. Um, it's, a, it's toxic to, especially to microorganisms. Um, they can eat it, but they, if you want to keep as, your mushrooms as healthy as you possibly can, um, you don't want to caramelize your, your, the things that you're feeding them. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and pour the rest of this coconut water in here. All right, now that it's starting to steam up a little bit, I'm gonna turn this heat off, give it a couple quick little stirs. And I'm going to take this over to the sink. Excuse me, but it's hot. I'm gonna pour this in the sink just because I, uh, if it spills, I don't want it to spill and make a mess anywhere. You can see it's a little more thick at the bottom. I wanna make sure I get all that out of there. You see that thick stuff there. All right, so um, what I'm gonna do now, I have the agar in here. I'm gonna take the little hose and stick it into the insert. I'm going to line this all up, make sure that it's level. I'm gonna take the opposite, and I'm not gonna tighten them yet. I'm just gonna kinda get them set. Because I don't wanna tighten one side too much and then have it tilt up, because then steam will sh shoot out whatever side's tilted up. So now that they're all on there, I'm gonna tighten the opposing sides at the same time so that one side doesn't go higher than the other one. And there we go. And the stopcock is flipped up. And I'm going to turn this on and I'm gonna turn it to 10. I'm going to keep an eye on this. Once I notice that steam is coming out of this stopcock, I'm going to close it. Um, once the stopcock is closed, I'm going to wait until it reaches 10 PSI. Once it reaches 10 PSI, we're going to come back and turn this down. See you guys in a little bit. All right, I'm letting the pressure out slowly. Because there's liquids in here, you don't wanna let the pressure out fast and you don't wanna let the pressure out if there is any pressure still built up in there, only when it's down to zero. Um, if you let the pressure out fast or if there's high pressure, um, it's going to cause the liquid inside to bubble up and potentially bubble out of the container that it's in. And we're gonna to wanna to do this when it's still a little bit warm. Um, you want to be able to handle it, but you want the agar to still be liquid. When it cools down um, below 120 degrees, it's going to start solidifying. So I can't really touch that right now. It's a little too hot. I'm going to grab something to hold that with. going to allow it to cool down just a little bit so that I can handle it. Um, I want it to be between 120 and 130 degrees um, when I start to pour it. That's just my personal preference. Let me get rid of these bracelets. All 
right, we can see that it is a little more thick on the bottom. Um, so I'm just gonna try and get that mixed in. Um, and the reason that this happened is because um, I didn't, I actually uh, left my house after I ran this the first time and I thought I'd be back in time. Um, it was, the, pressure, the pressure cooker was off, the pressure sterilizer was off. Um, and I thought I'd be in, back in time before it cooled down, but it cooled down before I went, before I got home. I had to run some errands. Um, so this did cool down and I had to reheat it. Um, so that's why there is a little bit of a clump in there. I mean, I'm gonna try and dissolve that clump while it's still hot um, without burning my hands. Um, there, there might just be an extra clump in there. I might just have to deal with that, um, but that's okay. Um, and here we have the nettle agar, um, and you can see looking pretty, pretty gnarly. There's a lot of things floating around in there. Um, I don't necessarily know what I'm gonna do with this agar. Um, I'll probably just keep it for backups just in case. Uh, but yeah, these are both really hot. Um, I'm just gonna spray those down and I'm gonna come back and check on these guys in, you know, five, 10 minutes. Um, if you're new to this, definitely check on it more often. Every couple minutes, come check on it. Um, whenever, whenever you can hold it without it burning your hand, then you can go ahead and pour it. Um, so I'm gonna wait so I can hold it without burning my hand. Again, try and get that mixed up. Uh, but yeah, when I can hold on to that without burning my hand, I'm gonna go ahead and start pouring it into some Petri dishes. All right, for this step, there's gonna there's a couple things that you're gonna wanna make sure. Um, I have my gloves on, um, my hands are sprayed down, I have a mask on and my hair is pulled back um, so that nothing coming out of my mouth or my nose is gonna contaminate my agar and nothing that falls out of my hair is gonna contaminate my agar. Um, the HEPA filter is the cleanest area. Um, the area closest to me is the dirtiest and, and I am the dirtiest thing around this. Um, so I wanna stay downwind um, from my work. Um, I have some dishes here that were um, left over from the last time I poured some plates. Um, and this is cool enough to the touch. I can tell that it's still a little warm, um, that it might leave some condensation, uh, which isn't the biggest deal. Um, condensation is really easy to get rid of. Um, we can talk about that in a whole in another video. Um, but condensation is pretty easy to get rid of if you do get it. Um, if you want to avoid condensation, um, definitely get some means of checking the temperature, uh, like a uh, laser thermometer or something like that, um, and wait until it's around 125 or something to start pouring it. Um, so yep going here and I'm going to start pouring from the bottom keeping it close to the filter setting that lid down there and filling it mm, a little less than halfway It's a little more liquidy than I like, but you know, um, you know what we gotta do. Honestly, I'm, uh, I am um, jumping the gun just a little bit because I'm tired. Um, I, I've had a long day. Um, otherwise I'd wait, you know, 10 more minutes, five, 10 more minutes for it to cool down uh, where it wouldn't have any condensation. But again, as I mentioned, condensation is not a huge deal. Set this over here to the side. I'm gonna spray that area down here. And prep this next. You can see a little bit of agar there has cooled down and solidified. So we got a new container here, a new package of sterile um, agar dishes, you can see there's a little uh, rip opening area there. Um, I personally don't like using that um, pre-made opening. Um, I'm gonna take a scalpel here and just slice the top off. Slice a little opening in the top there. 
save this for other uses later. And I'm gonna turn this upside down and pull it right on out. I'm gonna save this piece of plastic. It's nice and clean in the inside. I'm gonna save this to put my clean petri dishes back into once they're poured and cooled down. Um, so I'm gonna split this in half because I like pouring them from the bottom up. I'm going to slide these over so they're out of my wind. And bring my hands down again. Let's go ahead and start pouring this. You want to try and keep the lid kind of over top of your petri dish um, and this kind of just blocks any potential contaminants and you're going to want to try and move smooth and quickly not too fast of movement so you're not stirring up the air but you want to move quick enough that you're not holding these open for too long you can see that glob at the bottom that didn't melt I tried my best to avoid it, but agar is a tricky, tricky game. <laughs> Super thick. That means that some of the agar is concentrated in this blob and that some of the uh, other dishes are gonna be a little loose, thin, uh, but this is okay. Oh no, clumpy, clumpy boy. Clumpy, clumpy boy. Gross. That'll be just a play, play dish. Okay, there we go. That is, that is a boof dish. Boof dish. All right, well we got our agar dishes here. I'm gonna let them cool down. And uh, then we're gonna get rocking with some projects. Um, I hope this video was helpful for you guys. Um, and I hope you guys can start to propagate in my celiate as always. Um, much love, peace, let's grow.